This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, high-performance cloud hosting for everyone. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and take $20 off your first server package. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is one more Road to Mac Talk show. Uh, I'm trying to get to talk to everybody we possibly can, uh, the speakers, the volunteers, and everything who help make Mac Stock what it is and, and ha- have made it what it has been, and it just gets better every year. This time, I get to talk to Brian Henson, who is the gentleman who helps all the speakers look good on stage by making sure we are all connected, plugged in, and have everything we need. Brian, welcome. It's great to see you. It's awesome to be back, Chuck. I'm looking forward to this. Well, I I really appreciate it. You know, you are you are one one volunteer that has such limited interaction because you interact principally with the speakers. Um, most of the attendees at MacStock will see you running around behind the scenes, but they probably won't talk to you at least not about you know MacStock. Um, and yet you're the guy that uh, is the grease that keeps all the speakers running on and off stage and, and, and doing so as smoothly as possible. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. And again, one of the reasons that I enjoy doing this is the quality of people like yourself, Chuck. I mean, it's awesome. I'm a huge fan of the podcast. It's awesome to be following some of the legends in the Mac community, like David Sparks, who was recently on. And, and of course, Dr. Bob Levitis was a recent guest and that, too. So there's so many outstanding people that are involved with Mac stock. So for me, it just delights me to um, get to interact with people that I'm truly a fan of their podcast, including yours. I mean, Mac Voices is awesome. And I really enjoy the lane that you run in in the Mac community. Well, I, I appreciate that a lot. But um, it's it's the people like you that, you know, you're kind of the road crew to the band on stage. You know, and the road crews never get enough credit, and I don't think you get enough credit for making it all happen. Because if if the audio goes wrong, or if the we have um, if we have projector problems, you're the guy that usually is able to get it fixed for us, and and the show goes on. And if if that wasn't the case, then you know there would be no there would be no main stage presentation. There would be no. Um, breakout sessions. And so uh, thank you for everything you do. Well, I appreciate it. But the the people that are involved in MacStock make it so easy. I, we talked about it last time I was on the show. When I was a, a lot long, long time ago, when I was a much younger guy, I used to work with a lot of trainers. And I will admit that because the speakers are so tech savvy and are so dialed in with their presentations, it does make it pretty easy. It's just a matter of just making sure that it's the little things that I can help out with. And if there's anything I can do to help anybody look a little bit better, but everybody's so prepared and so polished. And Chuck, you're a perfect example of that. Your presentations, you've knocked it out of the park every single year. So, and I always look forward to, uh, to seeing the presentations. And, and if I don't get to see them live, I definitely go back and review them after the, uh, after Mac stock. Yeah. So I don't think I've ever asked you this question other than what you just said. Why? I mean, how did you get involved with Mac stock and why do you keep coming back year after year after year? Well, you know, it, it goes back to what I said before, and I, there's there's a sincerity. This I was a huge fan of Mike Potter's podcast, and was really involved with his with his podcast and the community that he had there. But I was also a fan of a lot of other podcasts as well. And when Mike put together this event, and knowing Barry Falk, who's also another amazing human being, I really wanted to be involved, and it's really helped me kind of grow. Uh, with a lot of the people in the community because it's brought me to podcasts like Mac Voices, which I'm truly a fan of the show. I really enjoy it. I listen to the podcast. I love the lane that you're in and the topics that you cover. And it's such a wide variety of topics that it's just, you know, whether it be Allison Sheridan, who you have kind of a frenemy relationship with, or, you know, a David Sparks, who, you know, you were talking about his show and how you're podcast has kind of run parallel to his uh, with Mac power users and stuff like that. I've met so many amazing people in person that I'm legitimately a fan of the Apple podcast the community and the quality of the, the podcasts that are put out there for people that are doing this because they truly love it. 
And, uh, you know, the one thing I would say, Chuck, is you're a perfect example of that. I mean, meeting you over the last several years at MaxDoc has been such a highlight. And seeing how you and, and I, I will put out there, somebody that, you know, is a very good friend of yours, Cindy, has gone the extra mile for the show. And I would encourage anybody to come to an event like this, because one thing that they'll realize is that what you hear on the Chuck Joyner Mac Voices podcast is exactly the quality of human being, professional, just quality guy that you are in person. And to me, that's what pulls me back is just so many amazing people and that kind of Mac world feel and it, yet in a smaller community that I think really has clicked well. Well, I, I obviously I appreciate all the praise, but I think we, you could say those things about pretty much every speaker that uh, that Mac stock attracts. I mean, every year there's an amazing, amazing group, and I, I'm I'm glad I am not Mike Potter and having to accept and reject the proposals because I know that for every one that gets accepted, um, there are probably at least two or three others that you know there's there, you just don't have time for everybody. And they're equally good, if not if not better. So Mike has to make some decisions based on the speakers, based on the topic, based on the theme that he has decided on for each conference. And um, you know, I, I just I, I love the fact that I love the fact that so many of us get to come back, but that each year there are some new people added, so that it's not just a, a gathering of the same old people. And I think that's the best part of it because you'll find diamonds in the rough that you didn't expect because, you know, if you see a David Sparks come, most people are familiar with his podcast. Mike, Mac Power Users has got a huge user base, very familiar. Obviously, you've talked about it earlier on the podcast that they're going to have their 500 episode live at Mac Stock. I think that's going to be tremendous. But you will also find little diamonds in the rough. And it's un- and sometimes it's in unexpected places, and, and sometimes these diamonds in the rough really shine. You know, I remember meeting Mike Schmidt at the first Mac stock, and to see that you know he's involved with now David Sparks with their kind of they went from kind of a uh, kind of a leaving the man type of a podcast into kind of a productivity podcast now. But Mike is an amazing human being, and and just finding these diamond in the rough sometimes that are from unexpected places. I think it's really good. You did a great interview with L talking about yoga at Max Stock. And L is amazing, by the way. And I give you credit, Chuck, because again, you know, it would be very easy to say, well, you know, L is, uh, you know, really close to Brett Terpstra and everything else. You did an amazing job of centering on L and what she was doing at her event. And again, it just goes back to what a quality person you are. But there's little gems, I think, that you find at Max Stock that just make it such a great community and something that I'm really just proud and excited to always be involved with. So. Well, you know, Brian, that's that's been sort of a theme of the Road to Max Stock this year. The the number of people that have have come as attendees and are now presenting or have come as attendees and now they want to be in some small way either part of Max Stock or help build Max Stock. Um, the, the volunteers, uh, the, the also, also some of the business relationships and, and other kinds of relationships that have, have started at Max Stock because somebody sat next to somebody at a presentation and they got to talking and the next thing you know, you know they're, they are doing a project together of some kind. I, I think that speaks so much to the, the event itself and to, the, and to the people that attend because when yeah. you go through that door, You've, you, 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 it's so easy to make friends. And when you walk through that door, you instantly have something in common with everyone else there. And that doesn't happen in too many other places, I don't think, except maybe at some other conferences. But even, even there, the, the people themselves are what make the big difference. Well, and I agree with that. I think Elle is a perfect example. I mean, you don't have to be a Mac nerd to have a great experience at Mac Stock. Here is a person that came in that's basically a yoga instructor that really doesn't consider herself tech savvy. And now here she is a couple of years later, and she's embracing the community and doing yoga before both events. I mean, she's a perfect example of just how interesting of people that you can meet. And they don't necessarily all have to be, you know, like one of your recent episodes was talking about doing a, a, a Linux server in, in, in the 
Apple environment. You don't have to be that nerd to have a great time at Mac stock, you know, but you know, there are definitely people there that will go on very high technical routes, but it's just a, it's a great community because there's a little something for everyone. You interviewed the young man that was there a couple of times. So he was the youngest attendee, you know, so here's a, a young person that's interested in computers that I think really had a quality event the years that he, he came to the event. And, you know, I think there are other people there, too, that may not be a tech nerd, but um, are interested in Apple and Apple computers to make their lives a little bit better. And I think it's a great community that reaches out to it and includes everybody. So it does. And, you know, um, Daniel is the young man you're talking about. And to watch not only watch Daniel interact with other other attendees and watch the other attendees interact with Daniel. um, you know, and, and sometimes the age difference could be t- 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50. You know? um, and it's just like, okay, you're, it, it's someone else that is on the same path. They're just at a different spot on the path. But it, it is very, very welcoming. I don't think that anybody made fun of anybody else in, or, or, you know, said, well, that's a stupid question. That's just not the culture of, 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 the, of the Apple community, but especially at MacStock. Oh, definitely. And, you know, the one thing that's that's interesting is you get to meet people that you're fans of. Again, if you're an Apple podcast fan, you're going to be able to interact with people there. You were recently talking with Brian recently about, uh, you know, Johnny Ive leaving Apple on the podcast, right? Let's say we had Johnny Ive from the Mac stock. I guarantee you there would probably be a barrier and a wall when it would come to interacting with him about like, okay, let's talk about the keyboard, Johnny, or, you know, that type of thing. But you don't, there's, the walls get broken down at MacStock because you have quality people there that do have a celebrity status in a niche. I mean, there are people who know who Chuck Joyner is, who David Sparks is, who Brett Terpster is, but yet these people are very genuine and I think enjoy the interaction with people that are truly fans, whether, you know, if you, if you had Tim Cook at the event or a Johnny Ive or somebody like that. They're used to kind of having that kind of, if you want to say, celebrity notoriety. And I think one of the great things at MacStock is that kind of interaction that people that, you know, podcast a lot of times with themselves or with a guest get some real interaction with their fans. I'm thinking that the 500th episode for, for Mac Power users is going to be really interesting because there's going to be that live environment there from people that are legitimate fans of the show. And I, I think, I think the whole community feeds off of that environment. I think that's one of the things that makes it great, you know? I would agree. Okay. So before we wrap this up, um, give, give the speakers, uh, because hopefully most, if not all of them will see this and, and maybe just in general speakers anywhere, what are some tips to, to make your life a little easier as the guy that's getting everything hooked up for them um, and, and to help, you help them look good. Well, I think the key to it all is that the speakers realize that people are there to see them and they're really interested in the topics that they're presenting. You know, it's funny because any type of people that are presenting run a very different range from people that are, are very thorough and very paranoid about anything going wrong to somebody that's incredibly casual thinking that nothing will obviously go wrong in my presentation. Well, I try to feed off of their personality and try to enhance that. If it's somebody that might be casual, I just make sure that they know I'm going to have their mic available to them if they need water. If something does go wrong, they're going to be able to look for me and I'm going to be able to help them out. If it's somebody else that's obviously more worried, um, uh, I look at like, and you recently had Gene McDonald on the show talking about microblogging, and I love Gene, and I really enjoyed interacting with her. But you know, Gene was, you know, she, you can tell that her personality is the type that she's worried about little things that can go wrong and stuff like that. And so for me, it's just reassuring them that everybody's there to see Gene McDonald. They love her, and she's terrific, and her presentation is going to go great. And I thought her microblogging presentation, which she did at Max Stock Lex last year was terrific, which was something that was similar that you just recently talked with her about on the podcast too. So, you know, I I think it's just finding the personality of the person and just seeing what you can do 
to uh, kind of help them be better. You know, one thing I've noticed with you, Chuck, is that, you know, you tend to like to some, have some alone time to prepare and, and just to get ready to go. You don't need Brian being the cheerleader say, oh, Chuck, you're going to be amazing. It's going to be a great podcast. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine because you're such a slick presenter. You don't need that little pep talk. So I'm just there to help you out. There are other people that, you know, in, in public speaking, people talk about that. It's something that makes a lot of people very nervous, especially when they feel like they may be judged by very knowledgeable people that may be at the event, including some people that are their peers, maybe in podcasting or in the Apple community. And I just try to make it as easy as possible and realize that, trust me, you're among friends and it's going to go really well. And it usually does. So. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, your solution when you need a virtual server in the cloud. Need a virtual cloud server like now? Linode has you covered. You can deploy a new server customized to your purposes with the features you want in seconds. Time is money, and if you have that immediate need, Linode is there. And even if you don't need your new server that quickly, Linode is there. And these aren't just any servers. These are SSD-based, 40 gigabit, high-performance processor-powered servers that are suitable for web hosting, distributed applications, hosted servers, and more. Pick from a simple $5 per month nanodes plan, or ramp the whole way up to a high-powered dedicated CPU. When you need to upgrade, as your requirements demand, that upgrade is just a click away. To make some deployments even easier, there's a host of one-click installs with everything from Minecraft to WordPress. Need to locate your server in a particular location for either performance or legal reasons? No problem. Linode has data centers all over the world, including their newest in Canada and one coming soon in Mumbai. Perhaps most important, though, is their pricing. No surprises, no hidden costs. You pay for what you need, and you pay for what you use on an hourly basis. No hidden data transfer fees like some of the larger cloud services. It's your data. Why would you expect to pay to access it? With Linode, you don't. These are just a few of the features that Linode brings to the table. I want you to visit linode.com slash macvoices right now and see what all the fuss is about and take $20 off your first server package. Again, linode.com slash macvoices takes $20 off your first server package. You've been thinking about that virtual server all your own for a long time. Make it happen today with Linode. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. Brian, those are some really interesting observations. And uh, I, 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 anybody that works with people that are on stage, you're absolutely right. Um, because I've I've observed from afar, you know, I've naturally... When you're when you are a speaker, I think for whatever reason, however you are, you're, you're focused on what you need to do to prepare. So I'm not paying attention to how other speakers prepare, and you know you're right. Everybody has a little bit different personality, a little bit different style, and for you to be able to adapt to that, and 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 give them what they need, whether it's alone time or whether it's a pep talk or whatever, that's that's quite an asset to to Max Talk. Well, I appreciate that. And like, again, I've always felt like if I was shadowing you in the presentation, like before you were getting ready, you know, and you know, Chuck, I'll pop up, I'll ask if there's anything you need. I'll check in a couple of times, let you know what's going on with the mic. But I know you prefer that, that alone time. You know, you're uh, talking about the frenemy relationship with Allison Sheridan. Allison loves the banter all the way up until she starts to, her presentation. So, and and it's not about getting her ready to go because Allison's ready to rock and roll, just like you are. But it's a different personality type thing, which is, again, a very different from a Gene McDonald, uh, which, you know, is very different, too. Uh, so I think it, the key to it all is just looking at the personality and just enhancing the qualities that made him a max stock speaker just to begin with, you know? So ladies and gentlemen, Brian Henson, psychiatrist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what do you, what do you do in the day job? I mean, again, we all know you as the, uh, as, as the speaker handler, but what do you do uh, when you're not speaker handling? Well, you know, my wife thinks I'm nuts because I got a lot of things going. Probably the most visible thing that I do is I'm a high school conference commissioner, um, there's a conference in Wisconsin. It's the Greater Metro Conference. I'm very proud 
of my teams. We've had a lot of success. Um, like Marquette University High School is not only one of the most successful soccer programs in Wisconsin, but in the country. It's you know phenomenal schools I work with, and it's something that I really enjoy doing. But in addition to that, I do a tax preparation business. Uh, I'm an accountant, and I enjoy doing tax preparation. I'm also an active sports official. One of the things with with uh, Gaz that I have, Gary Melfis, is that he is a rugby official. I'm a baseball, softball, and football official. So when I when I see Gaz at events like Max Doc, I get to talk about things across the pond in the rugby community, uh, not only talking about Apple computers with him as well. And I also do some strength and conditioning coaching too. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire. It's crazy, but I like the variety, Chuck. So. You know. you're, you're worse than the rest of us. I mean, you have a lot of irons in the fire. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is crazy. So, it used to be a seasonal thing that used to, but it's like it's like anything. You know, the conference used to be something that was really kind of a part-time thing that's kind of morphed into much more time. The tax business used to be very seasonal. It's very year-round now. Um, and it's just the, just the nature of things. But I really enjoy what I do. And, uh, you know, Apple computers definitely help me keep all these ping pong balls afloat and be more productive, as well as get to meet so many amazing people. I mean, there's, again, the presenters, and we haven't even talked about Barry, but Barry Falk is one of the most amazing human beings. And you talk about a guy who is like the social event extraordinaire. I mean, his talent for, for making people feel welcome and, uh, um, and just uh, just rock stars is absolutely amazing. One of my favorite stories about Barry is my son and I play Pokemon Go together. And so I was listening to a Pokemon Go podcast, and there's this big event in Chicago, and it's called Go Fest. And all of a sudden, I'm listening to this Pokemon Fest, and they're like, yes, Barry Falk picked us up at the airport. And I met his wife, Bobby, and they are just amazing. And so Barry Falk is not only a rock star in the Apple community, but he's also a rock star in the Pokemon Go community, believe it or not, Chuck. And that's an, uh, just a testament to what an amazing person he is as well. So, Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. That's good. Um, if folks want to get in touch with you to discuss anything, whether it's their taxes or the school conference or whatever, um, is there a website or is there? A, do you have a Twitter handle that you prefer? Well, we have the high school conference website, greatermetroconference.com. Obviously, that's usually high school focused. So if you have Apple questions, I'll take them. But it's probably kind of going to be weird logging on the site. I have a Twitter account. I don't even remember my Twitter handle. Maybe we can get that in the show notes. I think I'm Brian Henson 19, if I remember right. You know, you tweet and you don't remember what your handle is, you know, so. Yeah. But uh, those are probably the general ways. And my, my email address is on the high school conference website. So if you go to greatermetroconference.com, you'll be able to figure out how to get a hold of me. So Great. And I will make sure I have Brian's uh, Twitter handle in the show notes as well. So you can tweet him and tell him you saw him on Mac Voices or you met him at Mac Stock. We got some great pictures of you up, Chuck, from last year at Mac Stock. I tweeted a bunch of photos out. So, I saw him. I saw him. Yeah. But folks, you know what? One thing as we wrap up uh, with Brian, but also with all the volunteers, every, uh, if you're going to Max Talk, please say thank you to all the volunteers because the event could not happen without them. And it's, it's, it is equally important to thank them as well as Mike Potter and Barry um, to, to, for, for making these events possible. Brian, I guess I'll see you in just uh, a, about a week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yes, it's going to be awesome. It'll be another year. I'm glad Cindy's coming. So that's great. Yep, you know, you're kind of low profile with her on the podcast. I admit it. But big shout out. Cindy is one of those volunteers that should get a lot of props because she has really worked hard behind the scenes. And I have deep respect for uh, what she's done through the years to help the event become successful as well. So, well, if everybody, I think every, every, all the volunteers. You know, they, they put in so much time. They do work that nobody else sees. No question. Oh, definitely. Yes, yeah, so for sure. And you're the road to Max Stock. I'm telling you, Chuck, this is amazing. I love listening to it. It's kind of my preview because if there's a new speaker that's coming, I listen, obviously, to the podcast. I'm a huge fan of the show, but it's also kind of my way for prepping for them. So I get to know a little bit about them. So uh, 
you know, we can put them more at ease or strike up a conversation as we're getting ready for their presentation too. I, I feel like I know you, Chuck, so it's not as, uh, I don't have to do as much prep work, but I'm such a fan of the show that I just enjoy listening to it. So, Well, I, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate it. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We will have one, probably uh, one last entry on the road to Mac Stock before we see you in Woodstock, Illinois. Mac Stock 2019 is where you go to register. You can use my speaker code, Mac Voices. You can use the speaker codes of any of the uh, any of the guests we've had on the road to Mac Stock. The important thing is to get you to Woodstock, Illinois for Mac Stock. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page. And get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.